Well, welcome to the refrigeration shop at BCIT. We're going to be looking at energy management systems and uh, let's go for a walk. Okay, so what we have here is a precision air conditioning system that would be used in uh, computer rooms to maintain precise control of temperature. Uh, the innovations that happened in the industry le lately is uh, digital scroll compressors for more precise control and uh, reduction in cost of operating them. And you notice that the control systems are uh, electronics as much of them are today. Uh, mostly everything is running off of a computer. Okay, the components of the system is, is down here. We have the, uh, the compressor. This is a scroll compressor. The newer versions would be what is called a digital scroll. Uh, the digital scroll is uh, more energy efficient. Uh, we have here a water cool condenser. That condenser coupled with a uh, cooling tower would also be a more efficient way of uh, cooling the refrigerant. Up here we have the evaporator. Evaporator absorbs heat from the air and cools the space. And if we go over here, right up in here is we have the metering device, which is a refrigerant flow control uh, going to the evaporator. Those are the major components of a refrigeration system. Uh, this unit is a rooftop air conditioning unit. It is not what we would call a precision unit, but it is a climate control system. It would employ uh, heating and cooling. The cooling is accomplished through a regular refrigeration circuit. Again, the major component being the compressor, the condenser located here, and the metering device and evaporator located over here. Now the uh, fan systems on these uh, typically had a normal uh, uh, motor on them. However, nowadays the motors have become more efficient and they're using these uh, high efficiency ECM motors uh, for energy management. Another uh, choice for rooftop uh, air conditioning and heating is a heat pump. So here we have a rooftop heat pump. So the components are somewhat similar to uh, an existing system with a couple of changes. This uses reverse, reverse cycle heating. So here we have the, uh, the components. Uh, we have here the uh, condenser. All right, so it's outside. And if we come back down on here, so we have our compressor. In this one, this is an older one, and we have a, uh, a scroll compressor. Uh, some of the newer ones might come with a digital scroll. Again, the digital scroll is more energy efficient than the normal scroll. All right. We also have in here that what makes the system different is something called a reversing valve. A reversing valve will allow this system to work in the, in the summer as an air conditioner or in the winter as a heater. So it just does a reverse cycle, the outside coil becomes the evaporator, the inside coil becomes the condenser and sends heat to the uh, building inside. And you can see the inside coil if you look down in here. Uh, here we have the outside uh, fan motor. As with all fan motors, if we replace those with ECM motors, we'll save a lot of energy. Look at the options that are available. All right, so this is your standard fan motor, typically PSC. And uh, we replace those with a ECM motor, we'll save money. Okay, uh, building uh, systems are usually controlled by a DDC system these days. And here we have a training example of one of those DDC systems. So basically inside, you've got uh, a bunch of relays and contacts that controls the operation of your rooftop air conditioners, etc. And then we have a brain here that has communication capability uh, so that we can uh, set up programs to uh, uh, do load shedding, timetabling, etc., to uh, command on and off uh, spaces so that we're not uh, heating or cooling uh, when there is no need. Okay, depending on the type of uh, building you have and commercial system you could uh, employ are different. So we've already looked at a rooftop type of system. All right, so we could see that on top of restaurants and stores, etc. The other option is to use a split or pack a split system. So we have a split uh, heat pump over here. So up here we have our air handler. 
Okay, the air handler would, would employ the uh, inside coil and a fan. And down here, we have the outside unit. And in there, you'd have your compressor, your outside coil, and your reversing valve. Both of these uh, systems are heat pumps. They're just set up differently. This is known as what is known as a split system, and the other one was known as a package system. Okay, so uh, one of the th other things you can look at for energy management is the thermostat. What kind of thermostat? Do they have the old school thermostat like this? Or do they have a newer version? And this is not exactly the newest version, but basically it's a computer that employs many of the same things uh, that you can do with a direct digital control system. So you, it does all kinds of wonderful things to uh, reduce the cost of energy for a heating and cooling system. Okay, we're here on the roof of uh, Building NE1 in Burnaby. Uh, beautiful sunny day and we're looking at a cooling tower. Uh, the purpose of the cooling tower is to cool condenser water. So the purpose of the cooling tower again is to cool condenser water. When we have a closed loop like this, it's more energy efficient than dumping the water down the drain. So uh, when the outside air temperature is cooler, the uh, tower becomes too efficient. So to save energy, we'll shut down the uh, <coughs> uh, fans and that will reduce energy costs and we can shut down the water. That will also reduce energy costs. So it's very much a uh, energy management type of system uh, where we can save energy with the use of a cooling tower versus putting the water down the drain with a wastewater uh, system. So what we have here is a uh, propeller type fan and that is what's used to move the air through the cooling tower to cool the condenser water. So as part of the uh, energy management uh, system here, uh, that fan would, could be shut off during uh, periods of low ambient temperature or the water could be shut off, whichever uh, uh, method they choose to do. Okay, this is the uh, drive motor for that fan and this is a three-phase motor. So these are the uh, feed pipes for the uh, cooling tower. Notice how well they're insulated. Obviously the more insulation you have, the more energy efficient you are. Okay, so uh, we're up on the roof uh, still and while we were down in the shop we looked at uh, a rooftop units. So uh, here's an example of a rooftop unit installed with the ducting heading into the building. Hi, uh, we're still on the roof and uh, what we're looking at here is a mini split. Uh, so the head unit would be down below. This is an air conditioning system, but it is a split air conditioning system. It would have individual evaporator blower units in the offices that it's trying to cool. So here we see the other side of the, uh, the mini split system and we see that it's running a DC inverter technology. So the fans draw a lot less energy than your typical PSC type motors. Uh, we're in the uh, mechanical room of building any one at BCIT and we're looking at now the uh, centrifugal chiller. So this uh, device is used to cool the complete building. So it does that with, uh, by cooling water. The components are pretty much similar to what we looked at before, so we can look at those components now. So what we have here is what we call the chiller, and uh, basically it's a big barrel, and in there it works the same as the evaporator in the other unit. So we look across here, we see the, uh, the condenser. So this is a uh, water-cooled condenser, all right, and on the roof, when we looked at that cooling tower, the water for this would go up to the roof and uh, be cooled up there. The compressor in this case is up here and it is a centrifugal compressor. <clears throat> it comes as a packaged unit so it provides cooling for the whole building again by shipping water around to the individual classrooms to uh, cool down on uh, valves through the air system. Okay so uh, at this end we're looking at the, uh, the pipes that supply the water. So uh, this is uh, water coming into the uh, chiller barrel and this is water going out. So that water again goes out to fan coil units within the individual classrooms. So that does the cooling of the building. 
the refrigerant is cooled in the uh, condenser here. This is water coming in and this is water going out. So that water would head up to the roof uh, to the cooling tower to be cooled.